to JG's Fight Talk, sponsored by Riches Boxing and Limitless Creations. And with me now, I've got one of my own, Tommy Jacobs. How you doing, Tommy? I'm very good, Joel. Thank you for having me on. No, I appreciate it, mate. I know you're a busy man and um, you've got a lot of plans ahead of you now. So uh, Yeah, Joel, it, it, it never, ever stops. Like, boxing is my life. I wake up in the morning, I drive to Hoddesdon, I train there for a few hours. I drive back, see my little girls, when they're at school, I'll go and meet them from school quick. And then I'm straight over to my gym, Willie's Gym in Cold Star. And I'm training other people. And I'm here till nine o'clock at night, five days a week. And then I'm back here on a Saturday till about one or two in the afternoon. And it's, it's just all I know. All I know and all I do is boxing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's what, why we've had to come outside because... I've got a busy gym tonight, so we can't. I can't hear nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a good thing, mate. That's a good thing. I'm I'm never going to complain about it. Yeah, uh, definitely, mate. So, when when did it all start for you, then, Tommy? You say you've been doing it a long time. When did it all begin for you? I've been doing this bloody ages. So, um, ten years old, walked into Harry's ABC. Yeah. Um, and literally just never let look back. I walked into my first session. I was never... I, I like boxing. We used to watch it all the time. My big brother was well into boxing and was all about doing... That's why I went. He wanted to find a boxing club. And Tom, do you want to come along with me? I said, yeah, go on in. I thought, yeah, I'll just go and see what it's like. But um, absolutely loved it. And as soon as I walked through the door, that was me. Never looked back and... Um, no, they, there's a, a thing in boxing news about about me tomorrow. Actually, it goes back a bit to my my younger amateur days, and I done an interview with someone else the other day who was talking about my amateur amateur days, and and that, they they were the best days of my life. And I try and instill it into the youngsters that I've got in the gym, or the youngsters who I'm training, trying to let them know what an amazing journey they they've potentially got in front of them. They're going to have the best time in their life traveling all over the country and perhaps all over the world yeah. with their best mates. And that, I just love this sport and it's, it's, all I, it's all I know. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people are saying that, you know, your pro debut is this weekend, even though it was back in March 2016. Um, yeah. You know. And well, what, what there's a bit of confusion. So, um, obviously, everyone knows and... Um, I'm sure people Google it anyway. But I, I went to jail. I got a long time in jail. I got 12 years. I come out after halfway. I come out at the halfway point. I went to go straight and get a British Boxing Board of Control license. And I got knocked back. So um, I was signed with Steve Goodwin. Yeah. He turned around and said, keep your nose clean. Go and box an alternative license. Come back in a couple of years. So I went away and I, I couldn't travel abroad. So I couldn't go overseas and get a license. Like, would have been a lot easier. Yeah. And um, so, but there, there was a uh, an outfit that NBC, the Malta Boxing Commission. And figures can't be choosers, I, I had no choice. That was all I could do. Um, it, it was professional. It was, it was on box trek. And so I signed up and I, I boxed in there. After... So I, I had my first fight that went on to Box Trek. I had my second fight that went on to Box Trek as well. Um, but there was there was some sort of discrepancy on the show on this where I had my second fight, where um, Box Trek removed their status and ba like, basically they lost their professional status in terms of what me, you and Joe Public and everyone else thinks. So they, they still call themselves pro. They changed change their name. And I had a few more fights with them just to keep busy. But it's, it's not professional. So it's, it's, it's like, it's unlicensed boxing, but with three minute rounds. I, um, I got my promoter's license so I could up the level of the shows and I would only bring in actual pros from overseas and get him on. But obviously, because he's not on Box Trek, it's very hard to find anyone willing to do it. Yeah, so yeah. it was hard work. But like I say, I, I had no choice. I had no other option. It was either not do it and 
go and get a regular nine to five and just be like everyone else in the world or keep plugging away, keep my life involved in boxing so that when the time come, I could jump straight into it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, finally it's come. So even so even when you were inside, Tommy, did you still have the buzz for boxing? Were you still training? Were you still... Do you know what? I've, I was training all the time. So um, when I was in Chelsea, Nick, there was a... Uh, ev- oh, everyone knew me, because obviously Essex boy. And um, they used to let... that You weren't supposed to be doing boxing training, but they used to let me do some boxing training and they'd, they'd let me hold sparring sessions. So we'd be in the back of the sports hall. They had a big shutter and that would go into like a massive store cupboard. Right. And we'd have about 30 people in there, 30 big scary prisoners. And they'd just shut the door and they'd say, right, you can go in there, but only if Tommy's there. And we'd all go in there and we'd all spar. And the same as every walk of life, what happens with boxing, exactly the same happened in there. Everyone got along. Everyone done what they were supposed to do. Everyone enjoyed it. Everyone developed and got better through it, and it, and it really helped a lot of people. Um, some of the screws in there used to get me out to train them, so everyone would be locked up over lunchtime, and they'd come and sneakily open my door and be like, can you come to the gym and do some pads? And I'd be like, yeah, of course. So um, we used to do that, and then um, when I, I, I was in Chelsea for a couple of years, went to High Point a couple of year, for a couple of years, Done pretty much the same. I was I was gym all in high point. We couldn't do as much boxing there, but I was working in the gym, so I was training every day. And then um finally I got to Holiday Bay, which is a decat, it's an open prison. And I was coming home or coming out six days a week from like eight in the morning till ten at night. And I set up a gym in Clacton, set up a boxing gym in Clacton, and that and that was so that was my job. So six days a week I would leave the prison, get the train to Clacton, and I'd go and train loads of youngsters and women and people of all ages, all, all levels, a little boxing gym that I created. And then, um, yeah, I'd done that in, until I got out. And then once I got out, I sort of dipped my toe into the unlicensed scene, like putting on shows, promoting shows, um, put on a, a very good level of show, I, I would say, actually. And um, kept doing what I was doing on the NBC and all that until we got to where we are now. A few years ago, I opened my own gym. Um, we've got a, a great stable of amateurs in there waiting to get boxing as the season's just started again. So, yeah, yeah it's just just 24-7 boxing. Eat, sleep and drink it. Yeah, and, and it all starts again for you this Saturday, live on Fight Zone. Um Fia Phyllis Tethers. Let's get it right. Blimey, what a name. Tete. Tete. Fia Phyllis Tete. What a name, mate. Um, yes. Yeah, and he's got quite a record. Well, he, he's got a decent pedigree. Um, so I, I signed with Mo Pryor, and um, I, I signed with Mo for, for a couple of reasons. One, because he seems to be about the only honest person I've met in boxing. And two, because he's, he said it, it was sort of, let me have a bit of my own influence on my career. Yeah. So, obviously, he's my manager, but we're our manager's boss. I mean, like, it's, it's us that employs our manager. So, and he was like, look, if you want to do something, then, then we'll try and do it. So I just said to him from the office, right, I don't want to fight no journeyman. I want to fight people that are above me all the time climb the rankings as quick as I can and get up there because don't get me wrong they, like, they, there's a place for journeymen in the sport of course there is and some of them are absolute fantastic fighters but I'm not 19 20 years old and need to do a bit of learning on the job I'm, I'm, I'm beyond that I'm a bit too long in the tooth for that if, if there's stuff that I don't know now you know, boxing journeyman for a year or two ain't, ain't going to help me yeah, so yeah. Um, I just said nah let's Chuck me in deep end and see if I sink or swim. And so that's what we're going to do. And hopefully each fight, the, the opponent's going to progressively get a bit better. And um, the, the aim is to be challenging for a title this year. 
Okay. And um, I know, I know it's a very ambitious aim, and injury holding off, and if COVID holds off, and if everything goes away, then then we'll do it. We will get it done. We'll get a title, and we'll get we'll wrap a belt around my waist by the end of the year. Well, as you say, the only way to do it is to hit the ground running and just crack on, isn't it, mate? And um, yeah, precisely. You know, like you were saying, I, I think you've got one penciled in for sort of September time as well. So there's no time wasted. In August. Yeah, yeah. So I'm boxing Saturday. I'm boxing three weeks later, and then I'm boxing three weeks after that. Yeah. Which, you know, that's that's a bit of an an old school way of doing it. You know, most people used to try and get as busy as they can every six to eight weeks. But I haven't got that time. So I've said, look, get me on every show you can. Um, it's, it's hard work because obviously you've got to sell the tickets. Yeah. But I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, if it means I've got to knock on everyone's door down every street just to get by, I'll bloody do it because this is what I want to do. This is, this is my life. And and I'll do it. Um, I've, got a, I've got a fantastic following already. Um, I've got a good following for this bout. I... I um, I thought I'd do a lot better on tickets, but we only got the tickets three weeks out. So, um, but I've, I've done surprisingly well considering. So we'll get this one out of the way. We'll finish this geezer off and then I'll grab the tickets the same night and I'll tell everyone, let's go again. Three weeks time, you'll call again and let's get the next one under there. Yeah. Well, Tommy, I wish you all the best, mate. And uh, good luck with your gym. And um, love to the family as well. I hope everything Thank you very much. place for you, mate. Lovely. Thank you, Joel. But no, um, stay in touch, Tommy. And, uh, no, I will do. And we'll have a catch-up soon, mate. Lovely. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you having me on. No worries. You take care, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Tommy Jacobs. So, goes at it again this Saturday on Fight Zone. Um, looking forward to seeing him getting back out there doing what he does you know like he said he's he's done some stuff wrong in his life but he's back on the up now to make amends and, and do what's right you know for him and his family he's got a good following behind him and uh, yeah we just wish him all the best for the future so you've been watching JG's Fight Talk sponsored by Rich's Boxing and Limitless Creations and also if you're signing up to Fight Zone four ninety nine a month 125 a week. Uh, yeah, when you go to sign up, there's an affiliate code. Type in JG's Fight Talk and just let them know that I've sent you their way. And yeah, let them know. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Are you ready?